Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. I'm Minister Cedric Harden and I'll be presenting Lesson 8 for July the 24th, 2022. We're still in Unit 2 entitled The Word, The Agent of Creation. And our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is entitled Conquering the Ultimate Enemy. Our devotion reading is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 3 uh, verses 1 through 11. Our background scripture is taken from the gospel according to John uh, chapter 11 uh, verses 17 through 44 and we'll be studying today from the gospel of John chapter 11 uh, verses 17 through 27 and then uh, verses 38 through 44. Our key verse reads, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live, even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? As taken from John chapter 11 verses 25 and 26 from the NIV translation. Our lesson aims today, number one, is to explore Mary. Mary's and Martha's faith relationships with Jesus. Secondly, to embrace with confident expectation the fact that Jesus has the power of God to save, to heal, and raise people from the dead. And then thirdly, to engage with Jesus honestly and faithfully even when faced with impossible situations. We have three outlines today that will be a part of our lesson. The first outline is entitled A Testimony of Trust. The second outline is entitled Deity Confirmed. And then the third outline is entitled An Unexpected Miracle. And we certainly thank and praise God that we're able to come uh, to you through um, our online uh, Sunday school to share God's word with you to continue to uh, sort of uh, encourage you to make sure that uh, uh, your faith is holding uh, even in the midst of trial and tribulation. Uh, we certainly are praying for each and every one of you. We're certainly praying for your families uh, and it's just very important that we stay the course and I hope that uh, at the end of this narrative that uh, if you've studied your Bible you should know this story quite well uh, but by the end of this narrative we will have uh, hope uh, continue to hope in Jesus Christ uh, even as we see difficult challenges in our world today uh, the Gospel of John is very unique very strategic even from the opening uh, of the first chapter in terms of what the aim if you will of God uh, moving on John to uh, present uh, information that would cause us to believe that's the theme uh, essentially of the gospel according to John to present Jesus Christ as the Son of God uh, but also to to uh, uh, to make sure that we uh, understand that, that life is full of challenges, uh, life is full of circumstances, life is full of death, uh, as we'll see in this context today. But life is also full of hope uh, uh, if we embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Uh, and if we embrace him, uh, uh, as someone who has all power, right? All power in heaven and earth in his hands. So we want to begin um, covering some territory from our biblical context. I want to read just a little bit of this uh, from our lesson uh, quarterly and then just a little bit from our lesson standard since we have uh, so much information to um, digest today. We want to just give you some uh, uh, pieces of it. I hope you will get your Bible and be prepared to take some notes and certainly some scripture references that we're going to give you that I believe will help us 
uh, study this lesson. Uh, we need to read God's Word and we need to study uh, God's Word. But our context from the quarterly, uh, John records the final and most extraordinary of the miraculous signs in the Gospel, the resurrection of Lazarus four days after he died. This uh, mighty miracle was the source of varied responses among Jesus' friends as well as his enemies. In fact, uh, it intensified uh, his enemies' determination to kill him. Although he had resuscitated others from the dead, it was soon uh, after their deaths, right? Uh, Lazarus' resurrection was more profound because it occurred after he had been entombed for four days and his body had begun uh, uh, to decompose. Uh, Jesus' enemies among the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem could not deny such proof of his identity nor uh, of the glory due to the Father and himself. So uh, the miracle of Nazareth, of, of, sorry, of uh, Lazarus' resurrection proved that Jesus possesses power over humankind's worst and final enemy, uh, death. But once and for all, Jesus permanently, watch this, permanently defeated death. All right. So from our lesson standard, uh, this week's lesson finds Jesus back in Judea after uh, having withdrawn to minister in Perea on the eastern side of the Jordan River. You can see that in John chapter 10 verse 40. Um, but this is one of those infamous sayings according to the Gospel of John. Uh, these I am's if you will I am sayings of Jesus in the Gospel of John. So these are found in John chapter 6 verse 35. Uh, John chapter 8 verse 12, uh, John chapter 10 verse 7 uh, and verse 9, John chapter 10 verse 11 verse 14, uh, John chapter 11 uh, verse 25, uh, John chapter 14 verse 6 and then John chapter 15 verse 1 uh, and verse 5. So let's get into this first outline entitled uh, Testimony of Trust. And this is taken from John, the Gospel of John, chapter 11, uh, verses 17 uh, through 24. We're sort of picking this narrative up in the, in the middle, if you will. I would encourage you to read all of the 11th chapter of the Gospel according to John. But we're going to begin today according to our lesson at verse uh, 17 from the NIV translation. So on his arrival, the Bible says Jesus found that Lazarus uh, had already been in the tomb for four days. Verse 18, now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. Uh, verse 20, so when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Verse 21, Lord, Martha said to Jesus, If you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. Verse 23, Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. And then verse 24, Martha answered, I know he will rise again in the resurrection uh, at the last day. Uh, just for uh, context purposes, uh, the resurrection should not be surprising to us. We actually, this is a doctrine, if you will, on its own. Uh, there's uh, a, 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 a huge uh, segment of, uh, of theological ground that we could cover as it relates to resurrection. And according to Romans uh, uh, chapter 10, uh, I believe verse 8, 9, and 10, we actually have to believe that God raised Jesus uh, from the dead in order that we might be saved, right? Uh, we have to confess with our mouth and we have to believe in our heart this concept 
of resurrection. So it, it's not new to us. Uh, but you can imagine this family has been rocked by the death. These two sisters uh, have lost their brother. And, and we all have experienced funeral services, uh, uh, the loss of our loved ones. And it, it shakes us to our very core. Uh, and we cannot understand, we cannot grasp uh, why these things have happened. Uh, uh, we don't know how we're going to go forward. We don't know what to do. Uh, uh, and, and so we grieve and we grieve but in this process here uh, you can imagine that these sisters are grieving but they have also uh, uh, set their gaze on Jesus right uh, uh, and, and, and they need to be comforted uh, in the loss of their brother uh, and so uh, Jesus is methodical in how he wants to not only comfort them these two sisters uh, uh, and even the family or the friends at large but how to move a people from grief to hope uh, uh, it's okay first Thessalonians chapter 4 would would state to us that we can grieve it's all right to grieve but we should not grieve as those who have no hope in other words, we should not grieve as though we are uh, lacking confidence in the ability of God uh, uh, through Jesus Christ, no matter what the situation looks like in our lives. And that's very hard to do sometimes for us, uh, uh, but it's, it is a fight. I will tell you that, and we're going to share some scripture, scripture with you. It is a struggle to combat uh, grief with hope this is the kind of internal fight that we experience and so you can imagine I just want us to understand that these sisters are struggling in many areas and Jesus is not only looking at the the uh, the external situation in terms of the death if you will and 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 and, and the grief but he's looking at the internal posture of these individuals in other words where is their faith right so Jesus is talking to them uh, particularly in our text in our outline here uh, uh, Martha is talking to Jesus and Jesus is talking uh, uh, to Martha and, and probing her um, uh, about this situation uh, but Jesus did not immediately return to Bethany after receiving the message that his friend Lazarus was sick uh, so he had stated his reasons to Jesus had to his disciples but they did not comprehend them at the time I want you to look at uh, John chapter 11 verse 4 and verse 15 so one reason was that he would be glorified watch this and the other to grow the faith of his disciples you know, one of the things that I would point uh, out to us today, and it's 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 something that we struggle with when we start going through things in life, and we begin to pray, and we ask God to maneuver in our lives, perhaps to stop the trial, to end the the conflict, if you will. But God seems to delay and not respond to our request initially. Uh, sometimes He may. And sometimes we just don't understand why is uh, a God delaying, right? Why is he not moving fast enough? Why is Jesus delaying getting to this man, Lazarus, who is sick and who is now dead? Why is Jesus lingering around for four days, right? Allowing this situation to further even the body of Lazarus to further deteriorate and it seems like our case sometimes that God allows our situations to deteriorate and so we, we, we began to struggle in our faith that, that perhaps God is not capable or perhaps he's not going to do anything right but it says here that the other interest that God had that Jesus had was to grow the faith 
And we have to think about that as a possibility. Perhaps that uh, one of the reasons that God is not responding to you in the way to, that you think that he should. Is he growing you? Is a relevant discussion we need to have. Where are you in the body of Christ? Where are you in your faith? And so Jesus knows that if he allows this situation to uh, get uh, uh, beyond impossible, decomposition has taken hold of Lazarus. Four days, uh, a body is 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 is, is uh, 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 has a stench, if you will. And so this looks like a very very hopeless situation. But Jesus was setting this situation up. And he was setting the people up. Because he knew the outcome. Right? He knew the outcome. And Jesus says in verse 23. Uh, to Martha he said. Jesus said to her. Your brother will rise again. But nobody's thinking about resurrection. Nobody's thinking about the reality of he's going to do something uh, 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 in the immediate future. This is not going to be at the last day. This is going to be where you can see it, right? So this is the purpose of of, of miracles, if you will, uh, uh, that that Jesus is purposefully doing things, healing folk, uh, 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 feeding folk, and 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 uh, 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 raising people from the dead on the basis of faith to get people to believe that he is the son of God right that's very important so what might Martha's initial expectation of Jesus be in this situation well shock you know uh, when we are experiencing loss of loved ones and friends we're in shock we're vulnerable right uh, and so that's the initial right but they're talking to Jesus right they're talking to the one who is able and who is capable of meeting the moment and meeting the trial and exceeding our very expectations we cannot fathom what God is able to do even when we are asking him to do things our our minds cannot comprehend who he is and what he is capable of doing and so you can imagine if a body if someone has died and they have uh, uh, been deceased for four days and the body is decomposing you wouldn't expect to see that body to be raised again right but this is the push at our faith and this is the push for us as disciples we have to actually believe right if this story likens to Jesus after his crucifixion right on the third day we like to say that but imagine being there in that moment that you have watched this crucifixion and then three days he's raised again you see the very man that was crucified that was dead that was uh, uh, put in the tomb uh, but now he is walking and visibly uh, showing himself or revealing himself to multiple individuals that he's alive right how would that impact you right so this is the thing that we need to consider and this is the concern and this is the the sign that 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 Jesus uh, uh, is engaged in here is not just about raising Lazarus from the dead it's about moving people from from a, 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 a state of hopelessness to hope it's about leading a people to uh, being faithless to faithful right so our second outline is entitled deity confirmed this is taken from John chapter 11 verses 25 through 27 again from the NIV translation the Bible says Jesus said to her I am the resurrection and the life right the one who believes in me will live even though they die verse 26 and whoever lives by believing in me will never die and then he asked her a question do you believe this 
right? Verse 27, yes, Lord, she replied, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is come into the world. That's a very important declaration, right? Uh, uh, but you, you can imagine why is Jesus asking these questions at a time like this, right? Why is Jesus probing the faith uh, uh, of of this woman uh, in this at this moment, right? What's the significance of this, right? Uh, because it's important for her to believe not just who he is, but what he is capable of doing and put all of her eggs in one basket, if you will, all of her faith eggs in one basket that I believe exactly what you're telling me, Jesus, even in a moment where it doesn't look like it, I still believe you. That's the very essence of what Jesus is pushing at here in this crisis. This is a crisis situation. So Martha understood and adhered to the belief in the resurrection from the dead. This belief was shared by the Pharisees and accepted by Jesus. However, Jesus had to move Martha, watch this, from this abstract faith to complete faith in him as the Messiah, the Son of God. So Jesus announced to Martha that I am the resurrection and the life, right? So this statement was a personal affirmation of his deity and challenge, and a challenge to Martha to believe that he had absolute power over death and this is what the word of God does it stretches our faith you know right out of the gate if you will if I can phrase it this way for you to be saved you you got to believe in the resurrection that's right out of the gate right that's the basis of our faith in Jesus Christ it begins with a, a declaration or affirmation that 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 God raised Jesus from the dead this is <laughs> this is how it starts right this is the very beginning of, of who we are, but we have to hold that, right? We have to hold that concept because if God raised Jesus from the dead, then why do we think he can't handle our trials? And if he raises Lazarus from the dead, a man who has been dead, the Bible declares, for four days, why do we believe he cannot do what we are asking him to do right so this is the challenge and as I said earlier this is the fight this is the spiritual struggle right uh, uh, that we don't remember the Word of God when the trial comes right we're not focusing on that because we've put a magnifying glass on the trial and that's all we can see and then the trial gets hot and we we don't reflect on what the Word of God says. So Jesus is going to who he is, right? The essence of who he is in the midst of this death. He is going right to the heart of what these sisters should be focusing on, right? And believing on and hoping in because God is able, because God is capable, right? So if, as I said earlier, if you don't get anything else out of this lesson, walk away with hope in the power and the promises of God. Walk away from this lesson appreciating the fact that God can handle what you are going through and what I am going through. But the challenge is what do we believe in the moment. So. I would submit some things to you, suggest some things to you. Stay prayerful in the trial, right? Stay in the Word of God as best you can, right? In the trial. Flank yourself with people who can encourage you in the Word of God, right? Because this is what you're going to need. Right? The word, Jesus Christ, the essence of who he is, is right in the middle of this situation. And what Jesus is trying to draw these sisters uh, uh, to, to realize is that he's here. 
doesn't matter if you think he's late he's present and no matter if he if he arrived late in terms of your time clock it's still not beyond his capability even though you think it's late right or you think he's late so we want to remember these things I also want to look at I want you to look at John chapter 20 verses 30 and 31 and again the the theme here is about faith the theme here in John's gospel uh, is about uh, believing right I was reading something and uh, you could look at it at your leisure in 1st Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 Paul is telling Timothy over there in that pastoral letter to fight the good fight of faith and that's what we have to do we have to fight the good fight of faith because trials come and, and issues come and even death comes and grief comes and then we're left uh, 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 hopeless in that situation uh, 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 but remember who you are as a child of God and remember the essence of how you got saved you had to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead that established you as a believer and as a Christian so we have to remember these things that just as God did that for you and saved you because you believed what he said to to begin or, or initiate the faith we also have to believe in that matter in that trial in that issue that God is still the same God no matter what the situation is because when something's dead and it's been dead and we think that it's done but then Jesus shows up and says I'm going to raise him up. It doesn't matter to me how many days he's been dead. I'm here. Right? I am the son. I am the Christ. I am the anointed one. I am the Messiah. And there is nothing. Right? Too hard for me. I was sharing with someone who's going through a crisis right now. And I gave them Luke chapter 1 verse 37 right and I want to read that and share that with all of us today because this is something that we have to remember right Luke chapter 1 verse 37 says for with God nothing nothing will be impossible right so we have a natural situation and we have a spiritual situation right and this is where we have to do our work and 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 uh, recount the Word of God speak the Word of God over the trial speak the Word of God in the situation encourage yourself in the very thing that initiated your salvation if God can do that and save me because of that maybe he's allowing this situation to mature me or to grow me in a fashion that I wasn't before God Jesus is changing these sisters right before their very eyes in the middle of death in the midst of the death of their brother Jesus is changing them Jesus is moving them from one place from grief to hope in real time right so let's keep that in mind our last outline is entitled an unexpected miracle right so now we can expect we can expect God to do great things in our lives right so John chapter 11 verses 38 through 44 again from the NIV translation verse 38 Jesus once more deeply moved came to the tomb and it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance take away the stone he said but Lord said Martha the sister of the dead man by this time there is a bad odor 
for he has been uh, there four days. You see that battle? Remember that struggle we just talked about? Jesus is telling them to do one thing and in their in their psyche, in their mind, they're talking about something that they're still speaking to. It's, it's not right. It's impossible. It's, it stinks. The body stinks. He's, you know, all of these issues. And so this is the back and forth. Instead of just obeying, right? But we got to get there, right? So it goes on to say in verse 40, then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? You see here, Jesus has a comeback. You know, he's trying to move these sisters to think outside the box, if you will. Think beyond what you see. Think beyond what you're going through. I'm telling you, if you believe, and I'm just paraphrasing here, and, and, and I can see Jesus saying here, uh, uh, if, if you believe me for who I am, when I tell you to do something, why are you questioning me? Why are you telling me things that I already know? Right? Why are you trying to inform me, not realizing I'm already informed? So the challenge, back to that word, is for us to believe and obey, right? So verse 41, so they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this, watch this, for the benefit of the people standing here that they may believe that you sent me. So let me just pause here and, and, and just tell you here, Jesus is setting them up. He's, he, he's got them exactly where he wants. Now that we've gone through all these preliminaries of the stone and the, the stench and the four days and all of this other stuff, the decomposition of the body, now he's going into prayer mode to his father, right? He's setting them up. In verse 43, when he has said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out. His hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth wrapped around a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. <laughs> you got to love Jesus for, for his, you know, his work. And just imagine in real time, these women have gone from grief to looking at the man that was dead for four days, stench, decomposition, healed, delivered, set free, resurrected so where's the stench where's the decomposition right where's all these other things that were there before they're gone because Jesus changed that situation you have to you have to be excited about this let me let me put it to you this way each one of us Every one of us that's saved, you came from a place. And it's important that we uh, uh, tell our story, be the witnesses that Jesus wants us to be from Acts chapter 1, right? You're going to be my witnesses. And we are walking miracles. Each one of us, every one of us, your story is different from mine but what's consistent in all of our stories or, or testimonies same man got us out some of us were stinking we were dead in our sins and trespasses now we live new lives the church is full of 
sinners saved by the grace of God on their way to destruction. And the Lord, the same one we're reading about, stepped into our lives, moved the stones, right? Took the stench away, took the grave clothes off of us, set us free, let us go, if you will, from the things that had us bound, right? And if you think death was not included in that deliverance, you're mistaken because you would have been. As the songwriter said, if it had not been, right? If it had not been for the Lord, had not been for the grace of God, you and I would have self-destructed. So this has happened to us. We all have a Lazarus background. We all have a Lazarus story. We all have had a situation that the Lord, and still counting each one of us, and, 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 and I'll leave it here, but we all have our own history books, personal history books, personal uh, deliverance books of how the Lord have brought us out multiple times. Sick on our bed of affliction, but raised again. Right? I mean, we could go on and on. But this is our story. Right? And we can identify how hopeless our lives were before the Lord stepped in on time. I want you to look at Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23. Colossians chapter 3 verses 12 through 14 I also want to give you John chapter 7 verses 14 and 15 and also Luke chapter 8 verses 52 through 56 again if you don't walk away with anything else from this lesson keep your hope centered in Jesus Christ no matter what is going on in your life right but I challenge you today to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. And as Luke one thirty seven says, there is nothing, right? Nothing we will be impossible with God. Let's pray, saints. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for such an account as this. We thank you for your word, for just reminding us of what you are capable of doing. We want to thank you, God, for revealing to us that you are the son of the living God. We want to thank you for believing, uh, uh, for causing us to believe upon you and to call upon you and that you saved us. And I realize today that there are many, many trials in our lives today. God, I know that the trials are difficult, but you are able. You are so able. And we learn today that it doesn't matter how long that situation has deteriorated. doesn't matter how long the situation has had a stench. It doesn't matter how long the situation has been dead. But you are the resurrection and the life. And I pray this prayer over each and every hearer today that you would resurrect yet again your hope and promises, not just on the outside, God, but on the inside. Give us a heart and mind to believe and to stand on this ground called faith in the name of Jesus. We rebuke any spirit of negativity that comes to, to divide and, to, and, and to, to condemn and even to cause us to have a lack of faith in what you're capable of doing. We bind that spirit in the name of Jesus. And we pray, God, that you, would, that you would endow us with more of your Holy Spirit and convict our hearts and minds to face the trial with hope and confidence that you are able and the only one who is able to keep us from falling. In Jesus' name we ask and pray. Amen. God bless you, saints. Just know that I love you and I'm encouraged today. I needed to be encouraged and I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm just sharing these lessons that and, and they are not for me. They are for me. 
They are for every believer and I have to feast upon them that I might be encouraged and I pray that you are encouraged and I hope that you will do your due diligence and, and, and read through these accounts and all of the miracles uh, uh, and the things, the signs, if you will, that Jesus performed even in the Gospel of John. And John says there are many other things that's not even written in this book, but these have been given and they are sufficient. That you might believe and that you might have life in the name of Jesus Christ. So until such time that the Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.